Johnny Dollar. By golly, I knew you'd still be down there in San Diego. Willie? Right, Johnny. Will Burnett. You don't want to leave without a crack at some of our famous Southern California fishing. Well, you're right, Willie. Well, but you're in luck. This is Ted Fluger. Fluger? Lives on Emerald Bay in Laguna Beach. Knows more about oh. fishing this coastline than any man alive. So, when he called and said he understood you were out here, I fixed you up. You fixed me up on the expense account? Sure. Just fishing? Right. Oh, uh, there's um, one little thing you might ask him about. Yes, Willie. Bernard W. Bessem. Bernard W. Bessem. Who is he? Uh, well, he's a client of ours. Big appliance dealer. Mm-hmm. And what about him, Will? Ask Fluger. Ask Ted. And have a ball, Johnny. Willie. Yeah? Ask him what about this man, Bessem? You ask him, Johnny, if he thinks that Bessem... Yeah? ...is still alive. <laughs> Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This ever happened to you? You're driving down a long highway or working late, and then monotony makes you feel drowsy. Perk up with no dose. No-Dose keeps you alert with the same safe refresher found in coffee. Yet No-Dose is faster, handier, more reliable, absolutely not habit-forming. The safe way to stay alert without harmful stimulants. No-Dose. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Trinity Mutual Insurance Company, Los Angeles office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Rildo matter. Expense account item one. 410 for a tank full of gas on a rental car. Half an hour later, I pulled in at Ted Fluger's place on Emerald Bay in Laguna. And what a spot that is. A semicircular natural bay of clear, clean water, surrounded by fine homes, nice gardens, plenty of trees, and with a view over the Pacific, second to none. Fluger is in his late 50s, I'd say, and one of those outwardly gruff individuals with a heart of gold. Hey, now, Johnny, you think we can get all this stuff in the back of your car? Well, we can certainly try. Okay. We've got enough tackle there for half a dozen fishermen. Maybe we'll need it. There. Well, should we take off? Okay, by me. Now, as I said to you when I pulled in, Ted. Yeah? Will Burnett told me to ask you about this fellow Bessem. Uh, just start her up, Johnny, and head north. Ted? Stick to the coast highway until we get to Balboa. My boat's ready and waiting. You're not talking, hmm? Okay. We'll play it your way for now. I'd appreciate that, Johnny. You know, Ted, knowing nothing about a case is uh, somewhat of a handicap. But sooner or later, Ted, you'll have to open up. I knew darn well that he was giving me a runaround, but all Ted would talk about was fishing. And he knew his stuff. Not only about the California coast, but most of Mexico as well what to catch, and how, and when, and where to catch them. But then as we passed through the little town of Lone Star Beach... That's uh, quite a building for a small town like this, wouldn't you say, Johnny? Seems a big one there on the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bessem and Associates. Bessem, aha. Uh -huh. Big appliance house for all this part of the coast. You ever hear of him? Oh, sure, sure. Bessem's the guy that Willie Burnett at Trinity Mutual mentioned. Bernard W. Bessem. Uh-oh. Red light. Well, look at that gorgeous doll. What gorgeous? Oh, the girl in the convertible? Her face is familiar. <laughs> sure it is, Ted. That's the kind of face that you see above the neck of every beautiful girl. What's she doing in front of Bessem Appliances? Shilling for the joint? Yes, sir. 
You'd oblige me more if you'd stare at your watch a minute and tell me the right time. No, it's, um, ten minutes to three. Anything else you'd like to know? No, but there's something else you ought to know. What's that? The light change. <laughs> oh, hmm, very funny. I tell you, there ought to be a law. What kind? A minimum standard for investigators, Ted. A girl that pretty involved in every case. I wonder what she calls herself. Oh, well. Now, tell me about Bernard W. Bessem. What's happened to him? Good man, Barney Bessem. Known him for years. What about him, Ted? A real fine fella. But those partners of his, the Rildo brothers, Tony and Joe, a couple of sharpies, Johnny, real sharpies. No. Well, tell me, what, what's up, Ted? And you know how they made their money? And when? Running liquor up from Mexico during Prohibition. They were only kids in those days. Bad kids. Mm -hmm. And what about them? Yeah, I never have trusted them. Never will. And why Barney Besom did, I'll never know. They'd do anything, Johnny, anything to get his share of the business away from him. What's happened to Besom, Ted? Well, I tried to call him on the phone this morning to see if he'd join us. Yeah? He wasn't there, Johnny. He wasn't in his office, either. Oh, you suspect that... Another thing... Yes, Tim? He didn't show for a poker game I'd arranged for last night like he was supposed to. I see. Didn't answer his phone then, either, when I tried to find out why. Ted, if you're leading up to what I think you are... Well? Yeah, I guess I am. Okay, then. Okay, so let's go fishing. Now, wait a minute, Ted. If something has happened to this man... Keep listen, driving, Johnny. If you know something about it, if you've got some kind of a lead on it... We're him. going fishing. All right, Ted. You're the boss. Only what's out there besides fish? Johnny, I'm afraid to find out. Private dock on Balboa Bay, a Mexican dockhand helped us pile our stuff into one of the sweetest little fishing craft I ever saw. It was a 21-foot lap streak job with a couple of 75-horse electromatic outboards, windshield, convertible top, the whole works. That's for comfort. Sometimes it gets pretty rough out there. When I saw the tackle that was already stowed aboard, I wondered why Ted had bothered bringing any more along. Never know what we may run into out there, Johnny. Besides, I like to show off my fancy tackle. Yeah. I also still wondered if we really were going out after fish. Got all of it, Manuel? All except this one more tackle box, Senor Kluger. Here, I hand it to you. Right, I got it. But uh, I am so surprised to see you go out again today, Senor. Oh? You are, huh? See? You come in so late last night. It was so long after dark. Well, I kind of got held up out there. Oh? A big fish, maybe, eh, senor? Yeah, something like that. Okay, man, well, cast us off. Hey, senor! So you were out yesterday, huh, Ted? That's right. And not just to go fishing, maybe, hmm? Now tell me. You'll see, Johnny. When the tide gets low, you'll see. It was obvious Ted had some reason for being evasive. Okay, if that's the way he wanted it, that's the way it would be. Once out of the bay, we headed south and west. Believe me, that hull with those two motors was a real traveler. In less than an hour, we pulled up on the lee side of San Clemente Island, and brother, what fishing? Yellowtail, mad fighting monsters, then albacore up to 30 pounds, a couple of barn door halibut, too, that weighed in at over 40 pounds. Finally, at dusk, Ted started the motors again, and we headed back toward the mainland, but toward a spot somewhat south of Balboa. Just one more stop now, Johnny. And you see the reason? The reason we've been wasting so much time in the deep water? Wasting time with a catch like this? I've been waiting for the tide to get all the way down. You have? Yeah. Well, why? Oh, Ted, come on now. Let's, let's dispense with all this suspense and get down to cases. Okay, Johnny. 
Last night, when I got to the place we're heading for, it was almost as dark as it is now, and the sea was building up pretty fast, getting pretty rough. Yeah. But visibility was still fairly good. And I saw the boat that was drifting there and the people who were in it and what they were doing. But they didn't see me. I don't think they did. I hope not. Oh, wait a minute. Is this your friend Bessem and the Rildo brothers? I have to be sure, Johnny. Have to be sure. That's the reason for going back there again at low tide. Under that seat you're sitting on, you'll find a couple of big gang hooks. They're almost like a little grappling iron. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, I got them. Then rake one of them onto that heavy rod with a heavy line, the 100-pound test. And I hope it's strong enough. So that's it. Yeah, Johnny, that's it. It was in nearly total darkness that we hove to alongside a huge bed of seaweed, of kelp. Ted put on the running lights then carefully steered the boat around the edge of it, very slowly, almost as though he were feeling his way. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. And the tide has to be low enough for what we have to do. Yeah. Ted, tell me just one thing. Now, Johnny, drop that hook over. Go ahead. All right. All the way down along the edge of the kelp so it doesn't catch on it. Whatever you say. twice, Ted kicked the motors over to keep us in close. With a waterproof electric lantern, he kept looking over the side, down into the water. By now, of course, it was perfectly obvious what we were fishing for. A couple of times, the gang hook snagged on a piece of kelp, and I had to clear it. Then it hung up again, this time for sure. Easy, Johnny, easy. Don't try to horse it in. Don't force it. Don't worry. Wait a minute, now here it comes. No, stuck again. Oh, I'm hung on. I think that. No. Wait a minute. Now it's coming. Gently, Johnny. Please. Yeah, it's coming up easily now. Oh. Then maybe it was only kelp. Only a piece of. Ted. Yeah. Claws piece of a man's jacket. The one Barney was wearing. While Ted Fluger threw an anchor over the side, then pulled the line up tight and gave it a turn around to cleat so we'd hold our position, I stripped to my shorts and went in over the side. I guess I don't have to tell you that the body I found down there, heavily weighted with lead, was that of Barney Besson. Even in the dim, eerie light from the waterproof lamp I carried, it was all too plain that he'd been badly beaten. Carefully, then, we hauled him on board and gently covered him with a tarp. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny. It was those crooked partners of his, Joe and Tony Wilbur. I saw them out here. I know they're both. That inboard of theirs, even though it was almost as dark as it is now, I knew what it was they were throwing overboard. Who it was. Ted. What could I do against the two of them? And they always carry a high-powered rifle on their boat. In case of sharks, they say. Mm. And it was too late. They'd already killed him. Didn't you notify the Coast Guard or the police? Try to lead them out here at night to a place I could barely find at dusk? I had to be sure, Johnny. Absolutely sure. And the tide was low enough to find the spot. Yeah. How about the Rildo brothers, Ted? Do you know where to find them now? I'll find them, Johnny. Don't you ever worry about that. Of course, one thing, though, it'll be your word against theirs. But I know they did it. And I know they'll deny it. What's more, if they know that you know, and if they're as tough as you say they are, if they are killers... Doesn't this prove it? All right, let's call up Hank. Anyway. Johnny, look. Yeah, I see it. The boat's bearing down on us. And there's spotlight on us. And they do know that I know. Get up the anchor, quick. We don't have time for that, Ted. Got a gun on board? Only a 22. Where is it? Up forward. All right. 
I can find it. Police will be able to make some kind of a showing in case. Now, here it is. I hope it's loaded. Yeah, Johnny, it's loaded. But they're getting close. All right, kill the running lights. Uh, no use. With that spotlight of theirs, they can't miss. We're like spinning ducks. And with that high powered rifle they have. Look, here they come. All right, Ted. All we can do is wait and pray a little. Give up strong tasting cigarettes. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Want to give up harsh tasting cigarettes? Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Want to give up rough tasting cigarettes? Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Smoke Kent, the microwave filter cigarette. Yes, Kent, the cigarette that made the filter famous. Let you get away from cigarettes that sometimes taste too strong. Too harsh, too rough. Because Kent, with the Micronite filter, refines away harsh flavor. Refines away rough taste for the mildest taste of all. If you want to get away from strong, harsh-tasting cigarettes, change to Kent. Remember, the finer the filter, the milder the taste. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Smoke Kent, the Micronite filter cigarette. sitting ducks in that boat of his as we waited to make contact directly above the kelp bed where we found Barney Besson's body with that big craft bearing down on us. The big inboard roared up, cut its engine, and quickly drifted over to us, the powerful spotlight still full in our faces. This is it, Johnny. Hello there! Well, it's the girl from downtown. Johnny, look, it's that girl from in front of Besson. Having trouble, boys? Johnny, we're okay. It's not the real ghost. That isn't their boat, are you sure? No, thank heaven. Hello, miss. Oh, aren't you two the same ones I saw in your car this morning? Don't tell me you're still fishing out here. Look, excuse me, I should have turned off this spotlight. There, is that better? I told you every case should have a beautiful woman, Ted. Much better, thank you. How come you were suddenly appear out of the night? What's your name? Molly Boyle. So glad I saw your light. Is there any gas to spare? I know it's out for it, Nick, but maybe it'll get me back to shore. Well, uh, sure, sure. Glad to give you some, Miss Boyle. Uh, toss me a line, huh? Right, you are. Here, here now. Good. Thanks. Now, let's see if I can pry loose this extra can of gas I always carry. I'll be glad to pour for you, Molly. Hey, who are you? You're cute even if you do say. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Dollar. Johnny Dollar? That's right. Well, how exciting. Johnny Dollar, Ted Pfluger, I'd right. like you to meet a couple of boyfriends of mine. Boyfriends? Where? Right here, Mr. Tony. And you better drop that pea shooter, Dollar. Tony Rildo. That thing you're toting, I guess I haven't much choice. That's right. You've got no choice. And Joe Rildo. That's right. Surprise, I huh? told you it'd be easy, kiddies, with only me and you and my own boat. Yeah, you did all right, Molly. Sure, I always do. It's like taking candy from a baby. Beauty and the Beast. You mm -hmm. killed him, you two. You killed Barney Besson. Yeah, now listen, Fluger. You go around making crazy accusations like that, you're asking for trouble. The same kind that Besson had. Right, Joey? Yeah, right, Tony. And the sooner the better, so go ahead. Blast him. You ought to know you had no other meddle with me, Fluger. When I heard you'd come out here, I came too, and I found you. I saw you. Sure, Joey and I were out fishing yesterday, but only the two of us, see? If old Besson was around anywhere, we didn't even know it. Right, Joey? Sure. Did anybody see us taking him out on the boat with us? Like we saw you heading out of Balboa a while ago? No, maybe not because of the dirty little creek where you hide your boat away. But you did take him with you, and you killed him and threw him overboard. I saw you. You really did, huh? Yeah. Then I guess there's only one way to shut that big mouth of yours. Right, Joey? Yeah, Tony. Yeah, hurry now. Now, Tony. It's blowing up. It's getting rough out here. As for you, Dolly, you got no case at all. You don't think so? You never did have any case against us. Only this crazy Fluger's word. Come on, Tony. Yeah, Tony. But after I put some lead in Fluger, then maybe you will have a case, Dolly, but not for long, see? Because at the same time, I take care of you. Tony, do the job. We got those weights all ready so we don't have to hang around? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and let him have it. Okay, it's going to be you first, Mr. Fluga. Tony, listen to I me. I don't think you can, Tony. Shut up. From over there with the boats rocking this way. Stand back, Dollar. So what? Not if I shove him overboard. Johnny, over you go. Johnny! 
Get back, All Charlie. Right. Get back, Charlie. Get back. It's my way, huh? Hey, Molly. Molly, there's a gun under the... <laughs> Take care of you. All right, Ted, come on. Welcome aboard again. The least you could have done was give me a hand getting back in here. Uh, what happened to our friend Joey? When you pushed him over, I grabbed him, held him under. He's pretty wet by now. All right, let's haul him up topside before he gets too waterlogged. And Tony, too. Okay, I'll get a photo. Ah, that Molly Boyle or Doyle or whatever your name is. Oh, there is another gun aboard this boat. Yeah, yeah, Tony. It's up, up there under the car. All right. See, I didn't get it when he told me because I like you, Johnny. See, it wasn't any of my doing, Johnny. I mean, what they did to Bessie and what they tried to do to you and Fluger. I understand, Johnny. Honest. Look, look, you can tell the police. They made me bring my boat out here from sea. Uh, how was I to know what they were up to? Understand, Johnny? Why would a nice girl like me be doing something like this? Understand, Johnny? What do you think? Look, uh, maybe if I turn evidence against them. Help me, Johnny. Look, after setting up a party like this, Molly, you couldn't get help from your own mother. No, but Johnny, honey, listen, look, look at me. I could be good here for a nice guy like you, and I... I the could... only thing you can do is get your pretty hands dirty helping Ted pull those rats aboard. Now, go ahead. But, Johnny, listen, you got to help I'll me. I promise that if you don't get to work, I'll help you over the side. Now, go on. up to the authorities now, and I don't really think they'll have any trouble putting those three where they belong. The real reward for all that? A couple of days of really great fishing, thanks to Ted Pluger. Expense account total? With only the fare back to Hartford, call it $2.50 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a case I call the weather or not matter. Tune in, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Do you like a car with plenty of pep? A car with reserve power for safe passing? Most good drivers do, but they don't like to pay extra for premium gasoline. Listen, in three out of five cars, regular-priced Sinclair Dino Gasoline matches performance of premium gasolines saves you up to four cents a gallon. Almost anywhere you see the Sinclair Dinosaur sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon with Dino. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino gasoline. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were John Gibson, Hetty Galen, Larry Robinson, Marty Green, Ralph Camargo, and Marty Myers. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Art Hanna speaking. Have you ever stopped to realize how lucky we are? When people behind the Iron Curtain turn on their radios, they hear only what their leaders want them to hear. In this country, you can flick a switch day or night and get a true, complete report of what's happening everywhere. You get the news first, fastest, most accurately, and most completely when your dial is set to this CBS radio network station. For news about local, state, national, and international affairs, even the news from out of this world... Count on the frequent broadcasts of expanded CBS News. Hear CBS News every hour on the hour, every weekday. Chris Schenkel reports on worldwide sports each weeknight on the CBS radio network. This is KRLD AM and FM, Dallas.